Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. We've got our special guest, Brendan Hufford. Great to see you, Brendan. Brendan, where I didn't ask, where are you based? Just outside of Chicago. Outside um, Chicago. If I tell people Northwest Indiana, that could mean like a lot of different things. <laughs> um, it's just like generic Midwest, but just, it's pretty much Chicago. Awesome. We've got uh, we've got Indiana in the house. Justin Castelli, Fishers. I've been Oh, hey, man, down by Indy? That's rad. Um, but uh, welcome, everyone. So we're going to let everyone trickle in. Brendan, is he's got a real uh, some, a real treat in store for us today. I'm thrilled because this is a big part of our strategy, how we spend our time. But um, before we jump in, I would love for you to answer uh, into the chat. Drop into the chat um, where, you, where you're uh, coming in from, uh, uh, where you're dialing in from, where you're attending from. and what attracted you? Uh, why are you here? Uh, I think that this is kind of a, you know, for those of you who are here, it means that you even know what the acronym SEO stands for. So, uh, but we'd love to hear, um, you know, what, what brought you to, uh, uh, to this, this conversation. And uh, we're going to, um, we're going to have some fun time for, for Q and A. We've got a t treasure trove of uh, wisdom. I see some friends, Kara Minder, uh, Justin, John, Sarah. Uh, where did I say? I saw Ellen, Don Lee as well. So we've got a, an incredible crew of people. So without any further ado, because the, the faster we jump into this presentation, the more time we're going to get to ask uh, Brendan questions. I want to jump into uh, to the topic uh, du jour. Actually, I give a really, really brief background um, as to why this topic is is important to me. So I like compound interest. Um, my strategy for life is really compound small wins for a long period of time consistently and see what happens. Uh, I've used that in personal investing. I've used that as I've grown rad reads. You know, we're about to send issue 348 uh, this, uh, this Saturday. And so I'm very much, to use a baseball analogy, of just like get on first base. Like stick your elbow out if you need to, uh, but just get on first base. Don't aim for the home runs. The home runs will come when they're meant to come. But if you just show up repeatedly, it's going to pay dividends. Now, this little thing called SEO, we kind of accidentally stumbled into it when we were writing some of our Notion pages uh, earlier. But what we realized is that if you wrote a page that people were interested in with a certain kind of format, like some simple rules, people would just find that page without you promoting it. It took some time, uh, but it was like, holy shit. There are thousands of people coming to our website. They're not going to the homepage. They're not going to the 10K work page. They are going to this page that says the only Notion tutorial you'll ever need. And I think that page gets like a couple thousand visits a month. And so every day, Rad Reads gets about 45 leads. Uh, new subscribers just from SEO. And it's mostly through the pages we've done on Notion, but we're trying to expand that, which is why I'm here to learn from, from Brendan as well. And what I love about it is it's not, um, it's not particularly flashy. It's not TikTok. There's no virality. No one's high-fiving you because you have good SEO, except for the SEO nerds out there like Brendan. Uh, no one even knows, right? And until someone texts you, they're like, this has happened. They send me screenshots. They're like, learn Notion. And then they see like Notion is the first result and Rad Reads is the second result. And then they like send me the screenshot of that, like in, on texting. So that's the only time you get to flex your SEO when like someone actually uh, does the search. But again, we're not here to be flashy. We're just here to compound these wins. So before I jump into to Brendan, uh, we're we're playing with this new series. We're calling it the Small Business with, uh, um, Small Business with Soul series. So there is a very unique group of folks here who are trying to build small businesses on their own terms. Uh, that means for us, that means not working more than 30 hours a week. It means for me surfing every morning until 1130. Uh, it means the communicating in the way you want to communicate, working with the team you want to work with. And so this is actually the kickoff event, Brendan, for the small business with, uh, with Soul Series. So uh, we could add the SEO, right? She sells seashells by the seashore. Uh, so uh, without any further ado, I want to introduce today's guest, Brendan Hufford. Uh, he's the founder of Growth Sprints and teaches and the creator of the course SEO for the rest of us, which we'll be hearing all about today. And as always, Jane is running the chat. Uh, we're going to be dropping in links. Don't worry about grabbing them. You'll get them in the follow-ups and on the Podia replay. So take it away, Brendan. 
Yeah, I, I just want to say before I start, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm really, really grateful. Uh, you, we'll talk a little bit about my story here in a minute. Uh, it's only relevant in as much as it's helpful for other people. Uh, but I am really excited to share uh, some things about SEO simply because of everything that I just saw in the chat, right? Like it's voodoo. It feels like my first tagline was like, it's SEO, not sorcery, uh, which I still think is pretty good. Um, the the biggest thing is like, it can feel overwhelming uh, by nature of it. It's one of the hardest things to learn by Googling because all the results are a bunch of SEO people doing SEO about SEO. So it's not always the most helpful stuff. The things I'm going to share with you today would never rank in Google because I'm not going to write a 27,000 word article about it, right? Like that's a weird snake eating its own tail kind of game that I don't play. Um, but I'm excited to kind of break down everything for everybody. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. We're going to dive in. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. I also apologize if I talk fast. I don't mean to sound like a used car sales person. I just really like this stuff. And I was also a teacher for 10 years. So I'm used to talking to 14 year olds who don't care what you have to say. So talking loud and fast is kind of how I've rewired my brain. Uh, you think we'll be okay? Okay. We'll be good. All right, cool. We've got some some people with high CPU processing speeds on this on this end of the call. Perfect. Um, so I'm really excited. A uh, little bit about me. So I created SEO for the rest of us. Um, managed to get just by brute force break into the industry. I had a project that I did called 100 Days of SEO, where I was like, I want to be known in the SEO industry. I was working at an agency. I had left teaching at that point, thought I was going to, and I recommend these 100 day projects for people all the time. Uh, not this ambitious though, uh, for every weekday. So for 20 weeks, five days a week, I tried to publish a YouTube video, a podcast episode and a blog post while having a full-time job. That's super challenging. Um, I made it like halfway through and it was enough to become a known quantity. It's how I actually got a different job offer to go to a bigger agency. Um, that's where the two times director of SEO, I worked with a lot of SaaS and software companies. I am a former teacher. I will try to make as many dad jokes and be as corny as possible here. Again, it's how I've rewired my brain working with kids. But the most interesting thing is like, that's, that's only half of my story. That used to be the whole slide. That used to be my whole story, but so much has changed since I started working in SEO and started teaching SEO and even just feeling the confidence to share what I had learned. Um, I wanna start here at the beginning though. We have to get a shared definition of what SEO is. Um, a lot of times you'll see SEO defined this way, right? It's we blog every week and I do my keyword research and I put my keywords in the title and my, you know, all it's like a formula, right? You try to make your, if you use WordPress, you try to make your little Yoast light green and you're like, I've done the SEO thing. Um, it's not SEO. It's not. Um, other definitions is like when you, I, this is, I'm being facetious, but you read blog posts written by somebody who read it somewhere else. And then they write what they wrote and they tell you what's their best guess. And we don't know if it works for six months, but like, just keep trying that's not SEO either. So don't worry about that. Um, it is a skill. It is a process. You can do this, but it's not tools and it's not keywords. Those are the two biggest questions I get around keywords and what, what's your SEO tool that you use? Do you use Ahrefs or SEMrush or something else? Um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You already have, if I, if I tell you this, you're not going to believe me right now, but you will believe me here in about 20 minutes. You have all the skills you need to do SEO and to do it really well. Let's talk, so we understand what it is. Why are we doing SEO? So a lot of times when you publish anything, whether it's a tweet or a blog post or something, you get an influx of traffic. Uh, Rand Fishin calls this the spike of hope. You go to your analytics and you see that spike of hope, that traffic coming in, and then it falls off and you get the flat line of nope, right? That's what happens. And we end up getting on this hamster wheel of publishing, if I got to publish something new and I got to think about this new thing and next article, next article, next article, publishing, 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 and it's exhausting because you have no strategy that scales. You have no, as you understand, this is one of my favorite words, leverage, right? Nothing is scaling. We have no leverage here. We just have to keep going with our $10 work, right? And this is what happens. Or we can start learning SEO, which we're going to get most of the way there today, we get that spike of hope and then we get that rising slope. I had to rhyme them. I don't, it's probably, there's, is there a better, if anybody thinks of a better rhyme, throw it in the chat. I'm, I'm taking suggestions, but it had to rhyme. Um, and this is what happens. You get this compounding effect of SEO, 
where we get that spike and then it starts going up a little more over time. Then we publish a second article and it goes up over time and another one and it keeps compounding. And then we finally get into this place where we can do some of our best work, that 10K work. Um, and to, to understand why this compounding effect is so important to me and why I'm so passionate about this, you have to understand the second half of my story. So I brought you to the point where, you know, I was a teacher. I ended up leaving my teaching career after 10 years to work in SEO. Um, but things have evolved and transformed since then. Um, but what happened was I was doing this $10 work, right? It's very much a lot of what my teaching career was because it had a cap on it, right? I was paid my salary. I could do the best work in the world. And I was still there, right? I was still making 45K a year, no matter what. I became a director of SEO and I started getting into what I would call like uh, maybe a little higher leverage, but not super skilled work. This is like my director roles were very much this um, in terms, especially in terms of what I got paid. I think, uh, Kay, when I ended up looking back at the 60 hour work weeks that I was putting in and uh, hospitalizing myself from stress, which is real, uh, we don't have to go fully into that story, but like it wasn't great. Um, I think I made like $30 an hour as a director of SEO, just cause I was putting in so many hours. Um, I know you were in a similar spot too, right. Of just, it's just being like, for what the money for what? Um, and then my friend Marie, uh, did this cool thing that she, she was like, Oh, you should, I saw it on Twitter. She was like, I should come, you know, you should come check out this thing, how to grow a company of one. And I'm like, I'm a company of one. I need help. I'm kind of freaking out here. I don't know what the next steps are. Uh, I feel like if you were to hand me any more responsibility, like I'm already like barely treading water. If you hand me any more responsibilities right now to scale or do anything, I'm going to drown. How do I do this? So I hopped on that. I hung out for a while. And I was like, that was really helpful. Right. I started following K on Twitter. Um, and this might be some of your journeys as well. Started following K on Twitter and um, you made me cry on Twitter, which I don't appreciate. I don't appreciate that. But you, you, asked, this, you asked this question. <laughs> And it was like, I have four. So uh, the other thing, I usually have pictures of my kids in here. Uh, I had, I have four boys all under the age of 10. Literally nothing matters to me more than them, right? And my wife. And when I tell you that if I'm trying to figure out more ways to maximize my impact with them and my time with them, I can't over-exaggerate that, right? And you finish that thread with this. Like, so to recap this memento mori, and what's wild is, I don't know if you can see this on the camera, I actually have a constant reminder, uh, not because of your tweet, it was just weird, it was just cool that it aligned, um, that like I only get one shot at this, right? And all of a sudden you gave me a framework to, to go harder into this and to start doing, I was, I found your tweet. I started getting more into like 10 K work. I was like, this is interesting. And aligns exactly with the leverage I'm trying to build with SEO. It aligns even in terms of my thinking. And then I found this video. I love the team at convert kit. I love the team at Podia. You've done a bunch with both of them. Literally watched this video on March 29th. Um, a couple days later, I went on a vacation with my family and made the decision. I was going to quit my job. I was like, I'm not going to run the agency on the side anymore. I'm going to quit my job. It didn't make, it, and this sounds like a big, like, he, you know, hero's journey story. Like I was already running the agency. It was making, you know, it was 90% of my income and my day job was 90% of my stress. So it made a lot of sense, but this was very much the push of like, oh, I can live the life that I want and I can do the best work of my life. That's where I started getting into thousand dollar work, right? Again, not very high leverage. It's client work. I'm doing, I have a productized service that I run. I get, I make a very good amount of money. I'm really happy with, again, like, why wouldn't I be happy? I was a teacher making 45K a year, but I started to push into this area of doing, like finally starting to see what thousand dollar work looked like. And I started growth sprints. And that's where this gets us today with this compounding effect of SEO this is where we're going to go. So you can't understand like why I'm so passionate about this without understanding that journey to get here. And this is what I want to unlock for all of you, right? SEO strategy, right? Some of these things may not, some of the pieces of SEO may not be 10K work, but having a strategy that builds leverage, that gives you leads and clients and customers and whatever kind of business model you have, I would love to hear more about people's businesses, especially like later on as we get into QA and stuff. Um, SEO is very much 10K work. There is probably for most of us existing demand. I call as there's demand gen in the software world, generating demand, and then there's capturing demand. SEO is capturing demand. People are searching for this. People want you. They need you. 
how do they find you? Right. They're, they wish they knew you existed very much. Uh, I know I'm probably just fanning out too much. Okay. But like very much of like, I needed words to understand what I was building and what I wanted in my life. And you gave me those words. Like I'm all in at this point, as soon as you find it. And that's how people are going to be when they land on your website. Right. Um, when you start to have this fundamental understanding of SEO, we have to align on one more thing. Rank matters. You've all Googled things. I would be willing to guess the majority of you clicked on the first couple results, right? Like nobody went to the second page of the Google results, not normally, right? Maybe if you're super tech savvy and that might be a lot of us, um, but most of us click on those first couple results. That's just how humans use that search engine. Um, we have to rank at the top. So the question we have to fundamentally answer to win at SEO, to capture that demand, to bring people into our ecosystems so that we can serve them and we can have the life that we want as well by helping them have the life they want, we have to rank really well. And it's not easy. Only 6% of content ranks on the first page of Google in the first year. However, there's a lot of really bad content out there. There's a lot of really bad writing and things. So don't let that stress you out. But understand, I we are pushing into what I would call rare air here, right? We're climbing to the top of a mountain together. In order to do that, we got to understand what, what actually drives rankings. I'm going to really make this super simple for everybody. It's not easy. Please don't confuse simple and easy, but it is very simple. The things that rank is your website. Your website matters. Your content matters. Your authority matters. And then there's everything else. If you ever get stuck in SEO Twitter and we're arguing about all sorts, ignore us. Ignore all of those things. None of it matters. Your schema, all of that stuff doesn't matter. It's your website. It's your content and how authoritative you are. Here's how we can figure that out. First, I'm going to tell you once again, you can be good at SEO. You're either a super creative person or you're creepy level organized, right? Like I like to read and take notes or I like to write and make things. If you're a mix of both of those, you're already good at SEO. Congratulations. I am very creative and horrifically disorganized. Like it's embarrassing, right? But I've had to learn how to be organized to be good at SEO. If you're either one of these things extreme, great. You can learn it. If you're already both of these things, awesome. You're probably better at SEO than me. You just don't even know it. So what matters? Um, it's answering a couple of fundamental questions. What do they want and why do they want it? Why are they searching for this? And really putting yourself in their mindset of like, yeah, but what do they, this is very like uh, copywriting focus, but like, yeah, but what do they, they want the answer to this? No, but yeah, but what do they really want? If I'm looking for, and I know this sounds silly, but this was literally just yesterday, uh, the 4th of July, I was looking for how to make. I still don't feel like I know how to do that. I was looking for a steak recipe. And it's like, but what do I, when I'm Googling that, what do I really want? Oh, he wants to make a good steak. No, I don't. What I really want is not to embarrass myself in front of my father-in-law. Like that's what I really want when I'm making the steak and he's going to eat it. And if it's bad, I'm going to feel bad in front of my father-in-law. And I don't want that, right? I want everybody to be proud of me. So understanding that mindset, they're searching for these search terms, but there's something like, ask a couple of layers deeper, then how are we going to give that to them? Right? Are we going to give that to them? And this works for everything too, by the way, we're not just talking about your website. We're talking about your YouTube channel. We're talking about, uh, I'm very strong on podcasts being pulled up in search engines over a long enough period of time. On um, If you're big on Pinterest, that's also a search engine. How are we going to give them what they want? What does that look like? Where is it going to live? And then how do we make it more relevant, more authoritative? Now, this is our first of two frameworks today. It's called I am SEO. It's very easy. It's I, A, and M. The I am SEO framework is intent. What do they want and why do they want it? The asset, how are we going to give that to them? The medium, where is it going to live? How do we optimize that for more discoverability? And then the last one, you can tell in traditional SEO, it's backlinks, hence the little link icon. Uh, but how do we make this more relevant? I haven't thought of a letter for that one yet. Also open to suggestions. We're workshopping Brendan's presentation too. Uh, that's It's it's mutual today. Um, but the IMSEO framework, if you take one thing away today, I want it to be that you can do this. I want you to come away from this being like, I'm not still 100% sure, but I'm like very confident that this is possible. Awesome. We've done our job. If you come away with a second point, it's this. It's that as long as I match their intent, Long term, I'm going to win. If I can match the intent better, people say things like, oh, you just make the best piece of content. Like, ew, what does that even mean? I don't know. Match the intent. Make it so when somebody arrives on your blog post, your YouTube video, whatever, within two seconds, they know immediately, like, this is for me. I'm home. 
This is what I've been looking for. I'm so happy that I found it. If I would have landed on a recipe that was like, this is the steak recipe that'll make you not, you know, not embarrass yourself in front of your father-in-law this year. I would be like, cool, subscribe to this website. I don't even make food like that, but I would be like, give me all your recipes. I'm in, I'll buy your cookbook, everything. Like make them feel at home, understand their intent so well that when they arrive there, or again, whatever it is, the first five seconds of your YouTube video, they're like, Oh, okay, cool. I'm in. Great. This is exactly what I need. Then the asset, right? Like how is it a blog post? Is it a video? How do we optimize our video? How do we optimize our blog post? Our medium? Is it our website? How do we optimize our whole website? And that, you know, the case of Google, let's make it lightning fast. That's 99% of what you need to know. Just make it super fast. Anything you can do to make it faster, do that. Um, is it your YouTube channel? Uh, is it all of those pieces? And then again, how do we make it more relevant? Um, I want to focus on this because I fully believe that search intent is like 90% of the game. It's most of it, right? If we can just do that. Now, this does other things. If you email somebody an article or somebody slacks it to somebody or shares it on Twitter, if as long as you've nailed the intent of why somebody would want to click and read that article, it works everywhere. It's not just an SEO play. This is just an, a blogging play a written content play of like yeah but what do they want and why do they want it and then we're going to give them exactly that i want to share with you i'm going to share with you two stories i'm going to make them super quick but i have you have to understand like i haven't always been good at this i don't want you to think that just because you don't you're not sure if you're good at this yet that like you can't get good i haven't always been good at this uh, i was working at an agency and I was their SEO specialist. I was the person at this agency that was supposed to know more than anybody else. So we were driving, it was a web design agency. We opened a new office in Denver. We were all so excited about it. We felt so cool. We all went out to Denver and had a big party and everything. And we're like, buckle up. Brendan's got the page up. Buckle up because here comes the leads. Um, and I was like, all right, cool. I know SEO. We're going to rank for like Denver web design and all these things. Um, I built a bunch of backlinks to it. We're not going to get into that today. Um, because link building is like its own thing. It's not what gets you there. Um, but I had a bunch of links pointing to it. It was very relevant. I answered that last part of the IM SEO framework. And then like, we just couldn't do much. Like we would get rankings and then they would go away and it would be up and it would be down. And we, our rankings just kept going down. Denver design agencies. You can look, look at that, like down one, the other one, down two, down seven. We're ranking 25th, one on, like the third page of Google which is nobody's going there and the clicks are up and down, but you can see to this page, like we just weren't getting a lot of traffic. And I was like, okay, I've pulled all the SEO levers that I know. What is wrong? Why isn't this working? Um, those rankings were a result of one thing. Uh, would you believe it friends? I didn't Google the thing I was trying to rank for. Cause if you Google it, you'll notice the same thing. It's home pages and aggregators. I didn't answer that second question, that ask that question of like, how are we going to give that to them? If you look at this, it's only home pages and aggregators. So my like slash Denver page on a Chicago focused website was never going to rank. I hadn't figured out that Google and humans want to work with somebody who is local in Denver, not somebody who has offices all over the country. And it was at that moment I went, oh, there's a different way to do this. I have to figure out search intent. Shout out if you get my cruel intentions joke here. Um, the, the I feel like, okay. I appreciate you. You're giving you're giving me oxygen right now with at, at you're least dating like good, yourself, man. At least like, <laughs> I feel like you're at least giving me some like good try laughs. Um, but like yeah, I got you. I definitely am. I definitely am dating myself here. But like, <laughs> it's all about like the intention behind it, right? Uh, and the problem is, again, what did we talk about earlier? It's hard to learn SEO by Googling. If you Google search intent, you'll see this. I love Josh Hardwick at Ahrefs. He, you Google search intent, you see there are four types of search intent. Informational, navigational, nope, wrong. Eh. Sujan Patel, brilliant marketer, great founder. You Google this, there are four types of search intent. Transactional, informational, navigational, also wrong. Oh, here's Yoast's blog post on search intent. Informational, navigation weird why are they all saying the same thing because they read an art i had to go in this this blog post doesn't even exist anymore i love Rand fishkin um and he wrote an article in 2007 
since we're dating ourselves, about search intent, where he talked about informational and navigational and transact. Like, friends, do you really look? This is what else was popular in 2007. Chocolate Rain and Leave Britney Alone were like the memes of the day in 2007. Before we even had the word meme, really. These were just like funny things you were like pulled up on your laptop in your dorm room and stuff and showed people. But like I showed, I share this to be silly, but also like a lot has changed since 2007, right? And it's hard to understand search intent by Googling it because they're all just repeating the same thing that Rand Fishkin wrote 15 years ago. There's a new model. There's a better way. And you're like, all right, Brendan, let's get to the meat and potatoes. Like, what do I write? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you hold off one more one more story real quick because I'm a slow learner. It takes me a while. I, I worked hard for this understanding, right? Same thing, Click Studios. We wrote another article. I'm like, I got it this time. I'm going to get it. I, I understand how this works. We wrote an article about digital marketing skills, right? And they called it digital marketing fluency. I'm like, whatever, it's digital marketing skills. It's pillar content. It's epic. It's literally like everything you would need to know about developing digital marketing skills, right? Again, we got a lot of links to it. Couldn't get to the first page. And I did. I was not going to make the same mistake twice. I Googled it this time. And I looked at the first page and look at these search results. Top 10 skills, 15 essential skills, seven essential skills, top 10 skills, 16 skills, 20 essential skills, nine digital marketing skills, 10, 10, and five. Okay, cool. I got it. People don't want an epic guide. It's not a ranking. It's too epic. Brendan, you're too epic. Relax. They want a listicle. And then I realized something like, does anybody want a listicle ever? Like, really? Look at this content. This is just a bunch of people copying each other. This is a bunch of, this is why it's hard to learn SEO because you Google this and it's a bunch of people being like, oh, that's what ranks. I'm just going to make one of those. And it's like, I, I, and I was like, all right, cool. Let's go a layer deeper. What do these people actually want to know? What's the deeper question here? And I, I found this, and this is a screenshot from back then, right? It says 2019. Um, look at this. Tell me what, you can drop it in the chat if you want. What do you notice here? Digital marketing skills for resume. Digital marketing skills to learn. Digital marketing skills in the current year. Digital marketing skills needed. What do you notice these people act like? Why are they searching for this? Why do they want this? Because they want to change their lives with SEO, right? They want to get paid. This is super, super important. This is going to change. They know these digital marketing skills can change their lives. They're just trying to learn them. And I go, oh, they don't want listicles. They want to change their lives. This isn't an article about digital marketing skills. That's just the way we get them there. They're trying to get a new job. They're trying to start a new career. <gasps> I know somebody that started a new career by learning digital marketing skills. Spoiler, it was me. So instead of doing like a, you hear this like skyscraper content, instead of doing skyscraper content, instead of being like a hundred digital marketing skills, that's overwhelming to them. That goes against the intent. I'll just do three. three digital skills that saved my life. That's a compelling title. That's a compelling article. And that matches the search intent way better than top 10 skills, 16 skills, 20, all that stuff. Now you can understand through an illustration how this works. I want to give you the second framework. We're going to go two frameworks today. Again, you're going to walk away. I can do this. The I am framework, intent, asset, and medium. Last one, we got to talk about awareness. There is an awareness framework. This is, I'm going to give you the blueprint, the playbook of exactly what to create and how to create it. This comes from a book that you can only buy. Uh, I think it's like $400 on Amazon. You can buy it uh, direct. It's a book by Eugene Schwartz. Uh, it's like $150. Everybody scoffs at that. They're like $150 for a book. That's ridiculous. And I'm like, it's better than most courses. It's a book on copywriting. It's called Breakthrough Advertising. Um, I think for a while I used to keep it right here so I could grab it. Now I moved all my books. I don't know where it is. Um, but Breakthrough Advertising by Eugene Schwartz. He talks about these levels of awareness. It's true in advertising, but it's also true in SEO. It's absolutely amazing. I'm going to give you the 80-20 of it right now. All right. First thing is problem aware. These people know they're Googling. They know the problems and pains they have. You're like, Brendan, what about people who are completely unaware of the problem? We can't help them through SEO because we're not, there's no demand to capture. They don't know they have a problem. So they're not searching for a solution. 
the great thing here is we already know they're problem aware. They're searching their problems. What they need to know is that a solution like ours exists. This is our content here. Just cr helping them understand they're searching for that. We just got to introduce them that solutions like ours exist and really just empathize. A lot of times in these types of articles, people are like, buy my course, hire me for coaching, you know, whatever, hire my agency, use my software. Too much. They just need you to deeply empathize with them at that problem aware stage and take them into another article, maybe get them to sign up for your email list, a lead magnet, however way. Again, we're talking about building business with soul here, actually caring about these humans. They're not just subscribers or whatever. These are real humans. Take them into a solution aware stage, right? Now they know a solution like ours exists. They've found our website. They've signed up for something, right? Or whatever. Um, they're searching for things that show us that they understand that a, there is a possible solution for this. I'll give you a really good example here in a moment. We just, they need to know how our uh, solution solves their pain. So we just show them how it works. At the product aware stage, right? Now they know how our solution solves their pain. They're searching for something that tells us they just wanna know if our solution is the best for them. So what we have, to, at this point, we just prove that we're the best option. Again, a lot of times people are way too high up in this, this kind of framework here. They're trying to prove they're the best option and they've just met, right? Imagine, I, I hate using like dating analogies, but imagine you're on a date and somebody's immediately like, I'm the person, here's like my 20 point list of why we should get married. And you're like, hey, relax. We, for sure, we just met. Um, relax. We don't need all that. We're just trying to like empathize with each other. It's relationships work very similarly to SEO. And the last one here, most aware, uh, they already know our solution is the best for them. If you think at the moment somebody knows that we're the best solution for them, that they're going to buy or hire us or whatever, that's not true. They probably knew for a long time. They just need to know the deal. How does it work? Tell them, tell them how to buy your course. Tell them how to hire you. Tell them how to get on a sales call with you, however your business is structured. Um, so we just show them the deal. And it doesn't have to be more complicated than that. We want it to feel like inception, right? I've talked about this a couple of different ways. When they get on the page, they're like, oh, this is exactly, oh, wow. You're like speaking again, to use this word, like you're speaking into my soul. And you're like, Brendan, that's a little too deep for SEO. I don't think it is, especially when people are searching for solutions to problems. Um, this also works outside of the digital marketing world in the SaaS and software world. This look, if somebody's problem aware, they're Googling back pain. I don't know if any of you have back pain. I'm over 35, so I feel like I have back pain by default. It's just part of being an alive human. Um, I'm kidding. Uh, you shouldn't have back pain at 35. But uh, they're Googling back pain. They don't know what to do about it. They literally are just, go you know, I don't know what the search volume is around this, but I bet it's a lot. There's a lot of people out there looking for solutions to back pain. So we just rank for that and we empathize with them. Like that is really hard. I bet it's challenging. I bet it's hard to pick up your kids or your grandkids. It's hard to do regular activities that you've loved. You had a garden for 50 years and you can't garden anymore. We're just empathizing with them in those types of articles. And then we're like, hey, maybe, maybe there's a solution here. We kind of introduce them into our solution, which is yoga. Now there's also a group of people who are solution aware. They already know that yoga can help with their back pain. So they're searching for that. Then there's people who are product aware. Maybe they know about Brendan's yoga for back pain product which I'm going to release at some point in the future. I'm not going to, I don't know how, how to do it, how to do yoga. Shouldn't teach it. Um, but they already know there's a specific product and they're Googling that. Are we showing up? Is a competitor showing up? Is a review website showing up? What's showing up first in Google for these types of things when people search for stuff around us, right? Can you imagine if somebody uh, heard about like the 10K framework and they Googled it and, and K wasn't the first result? Well, that, that would be kind of weird and kind of not great, right? Ranking for the things you talk about in your specific frameworks is really important. And then they might also Google uh, Brennan's yoga for back pain reviews, right? They just want to know if this is the best for me. And then at the end, like they're just looking for pricing. How much does it cost? Do you, are you What's it like? Show me the deal. Are you going to send me DVDs? Is it a course? Is it an app on my phone? Do you offer coaching? They just want to know the deal at that point. They want to know how much it costs. And I have to rank for that. If people are searching for it, I should rank for that. Um, so I hope that this has been really helpful. A couple different frameworks. Like we said, uh, we've talked about the awareness framework, the I am SEO framework here. Uh, 
these two frameworks combined are what builds a business that gives you, this is that true 10K work that gives you that leverage that you can do all of the other things that you want to do. Um, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. I really appreciate all of you. Uh, we'll probably do uh, some other fun stuff now. Okay, what do you say? How did that, I, did, I wasn't watching the chat. I had to, I'll get too caught up in the chat and then I no. won't even, I'll lose track of everything. That was awesome. Well, Kara, Kara Minder, super, I mean, I, I'm like getting goosebumps because a lot of this stuff I'm familiar with, but the way that you laid it out, um, I'm like, oh shit. Like that was a, just like a different spin on something that I already knew. So always something super powerful. So Kara Minder, uh, says that cruel intention still holds up, which, uh, which is true. <laughs> and, uh, but I have to change the slide are intrigued with, um, with breakthrough advertising, which is a fantastic book. Uh, and John thinks you're funny. So, um, so all in all, I would say it was a, uh, a, the responses were very positive. So I, I have, um, I have, uh, I'm going to start with one question and then, Drop in, um, we're gonna do, if you want us to ask your, your question, just drop it into Zoom chat, or we've got a small enough group so you could just Zoom hand raise uh, and we'll um, we'll uh, pick up, call, call, pick on you, we'll call you. Um, my question uh, for you, Brendan, is around, is a problem, a challenge that we have is I have written, it's about repurposing content. Uh, and it's the spike of, the spike of hope and this, what is it, the slope of nope? The flat line of nope. Flat, the flat line of nope. Um, so I am a good writer in your, in your thing. I'm actually both, both bubbles. I think I'm, I'm a good writer and I'm pretty organized, definitely more creative than organized. Uh, and so I have written over 200 blog posts and, and for me, writing is this creative expression where it's not, I'm not writing for SEO. I'm writing cause there's an idea that I'm interested with. I'd say, if I think about it from a business perspective, it's more like brand building where it's like, oh, I want you to see how I think, or this is, you know, I want to comment on something that that's happening in the moment and so on. So I don't think about SEO when I write, mostly because I write it like the night before and I just need to fucking write it. Uh, so I don't have time to like think about my H2s and, and all that. Same, stuff. same. So, but now I have 200 blog posts that have good writing, but are, are SEO worthless. Like literally they get zero, zero traffic. What should I, is that, should I just accept that that's a, 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 a lost asset and just, you know, let it atrophy or is there a way to go in and kind of recapture what, um, what I, you know, what, what I've built, um, in, in a way that, that has leverage. Yeah. So I think there's two other pieces. I don't want to overwhelm people with, uh, frameworks, but I, I always think there's like two pieces of this. There's new content. Right? Like, how would I generate like, and I, I'm happy to share exactly what I do and how I like my exact process for this, how I do it for myself and for other people. Um, and then there's also the like, I have a lot already. How do we, how do we back in to things? Personally, the like backing into SEO is my favorite. Mm -hmm. Because what happens a lot with SEO is people do that like copycat content. And we're very much like in a crisis of that where it's like that what that's what ranks. I'm going to rewrite that in my own words. And that's good to go versus backing in where it's like, okay, cool. Uh, in fact, let's just give people a, a process for this. So what I like to do is I'd go article by article. It's very, um, you know, like hand to hand and stuff, very manual, but look at the article, figure out what level of awareness it's at. And then try to put myself in the shoes of like, if somebody discovered this, what does it perfectly help them with? What might they be searching? Um, and then just Googling that myself. Now I use, uh, you know, I mentioned earlier, it's not about tools. You can do this without any tools. It doesn't, you don't have to use a tool. If you're like just starting out and you don't want to pay for a lot for SEO tools, the good ones are like a hundred bucks a month. That's not nothing. Like I was a teacher making 45 K a year. That's a lot. I, I would, we would have to have a family discussion about spending a hundred dollars a month on that tool. I get that. Um, just buy the tool for a month and do all of the things I'm about mm -hmm. to describe. But I would literally just start with my article. What level of awareness do I think somebody might be at if they were to land on this? All right, cool. Where does it fit into like my business, I guess? Um, and then just start Googling things around that. Now I use Ahrefs. So it has a little Chrome extension that pops up in search. And I can just take the, like, as I search things, I'll Google, I'll open maybe 10 tabs, search a bunch of different stuff. Um, open up the Ahrefs for all of those 
like whatever's ranking well for those search results and start looking like, oh, people are phrasing it. It's just good. If you think about it, it's just good audience research. It's just mm -hmm. good copywriting. Being like, what are the, oh, this one ranks for these keywords. Oh, they all kind of rank for these keywords. No matter how I phrase these questions, it feels like this is the through line. This is the thread through all of these different searches. Maybe I'll focus it a little bit more on this angle, right? Got it. And if you, if it, if you've written something and it resonates, right? Like that's, you're in that spot of like, I wrote this, people loved it. They're probably searching for something mm -hmm. around that. You know, they're looking for it. Got it. Got it. So to summarize, figure, go through all the old posts, figure out if what stage of the Eugene Schwartz uh, problem aware, solution aware, the content is Google or use a tool to think about like, if someone landed on this, what might they be searching for and kind of like see how, how basically like top performing, top ranking sites are framing that question and then mm -hmm. modify the content or even just the, the title. What, like, do you like rewrite it, rewrite the content? content or do you, would you just change the title? Good question. Um, I would want to see, I wouldn't want to sacrifice the quality. Um, and I say that like really idealistically, if it's really good writing, sometimes there are gaps where a person searching for this, we might not have addressed certain things that somebody might want. Um, I very judiciously use tools like phrase or clear scope or market muse or whatever. There's a lot of different tools. Um, for this that analyze, like it looks at entities. So things that Google, like their, their AI knows what these phrases mean. There's even like a really cool, you can look at their like AI machine learning model, paste a paragraph in and it kicks back how they read it where they're like, that's a noun. And you phrased it and like, it gives you your tone and like all of this stuff. And it's like, oh, okay. Like their robots really do understand some of this stuff. Wow. Um, these tools pull out entities and you're like, oh, I wrote about this topic but I have this like big, it'll show you in those tools. Like you have a big gap on like these specific things. Wow. And it's like, all right, cool. You wrote about this topic. Um, I'm trying to think of one that's not soft. Like my brain is so software out. Um, you were doing like meta yoga or something. Yeah. It's like you wrote about yoga and it was this article about yoga for back pain. But when I dropped it into this tool, it said, it mentioned that I hadn't talked about these three poses and I'm like, oh yeah, they're not like top of mind, but I would like my article to be more comprehensive and like match the intent better. So maybe I'd consider adding something on those other ones. Just gives you some insights without having to open every other article and like read them all of just like really quickly. Now, why do I say I use it judiciously? Cause it just leads, like, if you just check all the boxes you just make more copycat content mm -hmm. and we're talking about building a business with soul like you you can't just have reach like you have to have resonance yeah. too and if all you're doing is copying the other things like people get there and they're like meh about it mm -hmm. you've done a lot of work for it goes from being 10k work <clears throat> to far less value yeah oh, wow you gotta have reach and resonance that's a great quote Awesome. I'm going to thank you. shout out Jay Akunzo. Jay Akunzo is who I got that from. <laughs> awesome. Um, who's got questions? I don't know if there, there were any in the chat. Um, and then, oh, there we go. Brendan, could you workshop an audience topic live? I would love to see it here, how your brain works. We were talking about this. Yeah, this is either going to go great or like <laughs> fail spectacularly. Um, you want to do, should we use Karaminder's topic? Cause I'm, I know Karaminder is, uh, is yep. uh, quite, quite a wise and savvy person who gets how this internet thing works. Yeah. But the, the way it works is you pass the mic. So I asked the <laughs> question and that's why I put audience topic, meaning someone other than me. So I'm just happy that the question's answered, but I'm happy that someone else gets their uh, topic workshop, if you will. All right. Does anyone have a topic to workshop with, uh, with Brendan? But if no one speaks up, I'll share. All right. Alan has one. Thank you so much, Karaminda, for giving me the opportunity to, to get some free coaching. And thank you, Brendan. That was really helpful. I was just yeah. on um, video off because I was eating. So how would you do this? So um, people are searching how to change career career path. Yeah. All right. Um, do you already have something on that or are we starting fresh? I have loads on it, but like about different aspects of that journey. Um, here, let me, let me just share my screen. I like, this is so fun. I like just, I don't like telling as much as I like showing. Um, 
So you said uh, like change career path. Cool. Like, let's career. say we have, um, let's say I have an article uh, about this. Um, I'll show you exactly. I'll walk through two scenarios. So I'll talk first about, uh, let me answer your question first and then we'll back out just because I want to make sure that I, if anybody is like, I'm in the camp of, I don't have anything. Let's make sure we help them too. Um, let's go here. We'll come back to this. So the first thing I did, I mentioned, uh, I, over time, what you end up, if you have a strong, a strong framework and a strong process, um, you can use more advanced tools. And again, like I'm saying that really being very careful because sometimes people jump into the tools too early and they become very tool focused. Um, it's a good, like, it'd like be like being a carpenter and not know how, in, not knowing how to use a hammer and nail because you've always only ever used a nail gun. You have to understand like how these other things work. Um, the shortcut that I take is, all right, cool. I have HRFs on here. Um, the first thing I do is, uh, if I didn't have the money for this, I was just starting out. I would actually just read a lot of these articles, but I put it change career path. Cool. It says search volumes, 400 gives me some idea that there's something here. I do notice that there's like these other things, career change at 35 ideas, career change at 50. Interesting. Let's make a mental note later that those could be different articles. Cause those are very different things. Like you're changing a career at 25, 35, 50, and maybe 60. Those could be different articles that we might write in the future. They could be different search intents, right? If I Google those things that different results come up. So let's we'll save some of those cool things for later. Um, I also like using this again, totally free tool. Look at this, change career path, cover letter, resume, quotes, Sims 4, that's interesting. Uh, you know, how to change a career path to these specific things. That's interesting. Oh, interviewing is a topic I could probably write about. And then the at age thing comes up again. Very interesting. But so I have some ideas for like other content and ways I might break this out. But in terms of like a, a larger article, um, I have, I look here, boom, boom. I'll look at the people also ask how, why should, when should I do this? Again, that age thing comes up. That's super important. All right. Again, Sorry like to I, interrupt you. I was just yeah. wondering, is that, um, is those searches coming up bespoke to you and what you're searching, your search history is though? Like if I searched it, would I get the same suggestions? Um, I don't know. You search it right now and tell me, tell me if you get those. It could be, it could be like, Brendan, we know you are 38 years old. So we're going <laughs> yeah, to serve you all age. these age related. Yeah. Things. <laughs> I don't, um, I don't think it does. I think the bigger factor is geography. Some yeah. people in different countries will get different results. Yeah. My, I mean, it, oh, I'm sorry. I also have my thing set uh, again, weird SEO thing. Uh, I have my thing set to show a hundred search results at a time. Uh, I think I got very similar results just to confirm for everyone. Cool. <laughs> Uh, also, another neat thing, I, before we dive in deeper, look, like, uh, right at the bottom is uh, is videos. So video is still, like, we could make a video about this. A lot of times you get, like, into a, people are told, like, distribute, be everywhere, make it all the things. And as somebody who tried to do the, like, video blog posts and podcasts every day for 100 days, that's really hard. But I can see that video still has a lot of play here. And some people are looking for videos about this stuff. Um, the next thing I would do is just, I, here's my top result that has the Ahrefs thing on it. I just click this little keyword button right here. And this is going to tell me, in fact, I'll do these for a couple just to see, they're probably going to be very similar. Um, this is a blog post on indeed.com and one on this other one. All right, cool. Changing career path, career cha change path. Yep. All right, cool. These are all synonyms, but I can see that like very clearly the, the, thing I typed in first, change career path, is kind of the topical parent keyword, right? Um, and then if I want more ideas, I start looking down here, at what's this article ranking on like the second page for and the third page? And I can get, again, those ages come up. Oh, there's quizzes. Interesting. Um, that could be a piece of content. Um, but yeah, I can see very clearly like the thing I typed in first is very much already like the keyword in the way. So if I had an article about changing my career path, and if I open, but let's say I open a couple of these, it's the Forbes and another one. Um, sorry, it's going to give me the, I don't know if you all can see the, the pinwheel here. When I open all of these, what do I kind of find? What do I see? All right. Um, cool table of contents, cool images, why they change careers, 10 steps to a successful career change. Wow. That's super short. Interesting. Um, another 10 steps. Are they the same? Oh no. Did we find more copycat content? 
where everything is the same. Satisfaction, values, interests. Oh, you're all gonna judge me on my slow, my slow laptop and computer. Um, transferable skills. Yeah, there's a lot of overlap in these. Um, it looks like a lot of the these websites that are writing this kind of stuff are just writing the same things over and over. Um, so you could definitely stand out in these search results. But I think like if I had an article on changing careers, oh no, please don't give me a list of 10 again. All right, cool. Um, yeah, it's very much like list-based. I don't know. This is where if I had an article on this, I would just start focusing on that topic. Um, I would drop it into like a, um, a phrase and see if there's any gaps that I have compared to these articles that are already ranking. Cause we can already tell like a lot of these articles are not, I mean, these are just written by like big companies. This is, this was somebody's yeah. to do for the week versus somebody who like actually gives a shit. So yeah. Is that helpful? Yeah. Well, career shifters, that's what they do. They help people change careers. So you'd hope they'd rank high, but um, they, yeah, 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 but I'm also helpful. looking, I was looking at the Forbes like, ones. Yeah. Yeah. They just, yeah, this one. Yeah. Forbes, we write, we write yeah. about anything and everything type of websites. <laughs> like also like what, is this is such a bad experience there's literally <laughs> nothing yeah the actual worst anyway sorry we can rail on for later yeah i hope that was helpful i'm happy to yeah, answer really follow cool questions to if you ever have them Corinda might have some. <laughs> brendan on that on that topic um so something that, that you alluded to but if i look at the top results they all yeah. have what's uh for the for those who aren't familiar very high domain authority mm -hmm. so it's like on a scale of one to a hundred like a uh, wikipedia is a hundred and, you know, Joe Schmo's blog is one, you know, that launched yep. yesterday is a one. Um, if you see a page like that, that has all like Forbes is probably like 98, five or something, if I had to guess, or 92. If you see a page with everyone is like super, like, you know, like New York Times is there, Wikipedia. Should you just be like, you know, I'm going to pick a different lane. This is, uh, this is out of my league or, sh and, and try to niche down and go, you know, at 35, at 40, at 50, where, there you might have Joe's blog and, you know, Kim's blog and so on. Um, like, is it, when is it worth to say, like, I'm not going to try to compete with the New York times, even though their article might be crap. So two things. Um, number one, I can tell you having worked in places that, so I'll give you a really concrete example. Uh, I worked with active campaign, huge email marketing software. Um, and they, never did an article about email, like to rank for the phrase email marketing. Literally the core thing that they do, nobody ever wrote a blog. And I spent six months working on just getting a page stood up on the website that could rank for the phrase email marketing. Probably one of the biggest entry points into the product. Um, had they written that blog when they were just getting started 15 years ago, they probably would rank up with MailChimp. They'd rank number one or number two for email marketing. They'd have a much more successful business. So part of SEO is I'm going to write this now because I know I can capture that demand in the future as I gain authority. You you will have wished you wrote it years ago. And then it feel you're still in the same boat. You're like, well, these other websites are there and I don't I never even wrote it. So like how could but you can, you just have to give yourself some time. I think I personally think that uh we're like one Google algorithm update away from those like mega sites just tanking because they're never good for anybody. Like nobody, nobody's ever like, oh, I read this article on Forbes and it was just the best experience. Like everybody feels like that's a dumpster fire. Um, but my point is like, so you have two options. So number one, please still write the article. If you feel passionate about it and you feel like you have something unique to say and you think you can be competitive, still do that. Content does more than just SEO. It's worth doing. Um, but, uh, you know, to, to your point, like, should you try to rank for the, the term, I don't know, like time management or productivity or something, these like huge terms. Um, I don't know. I think a lot of times people, what the, the mistake people make is they're like, oh, cool. I found a synonym that the tool says is a lower difficulty. But if you Google it, like, it's like, oh, it's like the other one is a difficulty of 79 out of hundred. I'm not going to rank for that, but I found one that's a 22. I could rank for that. But the problem is Google knows those are synonyms. So the same websites kind of show up. So don't chase the keyword difficulty metric. Um, but I do think, so a good example is I just looked up um, time management. 
I was like, all right, cool. Does Rad Reads have like an ultimate guide to time management or an ultimate guide to something, whatever. Um, and it was a, the first thing that Google came up was like uh, your article on time audits. And I was like, mm. oh, that's a cool different take and different intent, right? If somebody was like, how do I audit my time? They still want the same outcome. They're not Googling time management, but mm -hmm. we could rank for how to audit your time. We could rank for time audit. We just yeah. have to, you know what I mean? Kind yeah. of position it like that. So I think that's how I would go about it. I wouldn't just like find an easier, uh, like quote, easier synonym to rank for. I also wouldn't put it off. Uh, it can be daunting, but I think that, like I said, SEO is just one channel and I don't want anybody here to like myopically focus on it and then not make the thing they want to make. Yeah. Yeah. Super helpful. Thank you. We've yeah, got of course. time for one last question. Who's going to take us home? I know there's more questions. I'm also happy to, I'm not on Twitter a ton, uh, but I'm also happy to answer follow-up questions there for sure. God. Uh, so Haley asked, um, I own a bakery and don't have a blog. Is the process the same for optimizing a product? Oh, this is a great question. Is the process the same for optimizing a product-based business versus an educational slash blog-based business? Um, Haley, feel no, no pressure to go camera on and ask, but can you, on the, either on camera or in the chat, can you tell me, do you sell locally or are you e-commerce? Cause that does, or both. Locally. Locally. Cool. Um, so lo local SEO is a, a little bit different of a game. I do think that like content still works and I do think there are some pieces there. Uh, the site still needs to find a way to become authoritative. Um, the thing, one of the things we didn't talk about today around like a content strategy is link intent. Uh, there's a lot of searches out there that are writers looking for something to link to. They're looking for a stat or a trend or the history of something or the future of something, whatever your topic is. And they're just looking for something to link to as they're writing their article. Uh, it's super common. And they're going to link to the first thing they find in Google. So if you show up for that link intent content, your site will build authority and kind of on autopilot. Um, so there is that piece. We still need to get links. Um, local SEO is a little bit of a different game. Uh, it becomes more about optimizing for that map you get when you Google, like if I Google tacos near me, which I don't Google anymore because I know all the good spots now, but it's something I Googled a lot at different points in my life. Um, and Google a lot when I go to a new area, because I love tacos, um, showing up in that map, those first three, they call it the map pack or whatever, um, showing up in there matters a lot. Locally, it's a lot more about having like a, a more built out Google business profile than just your website. Your website can still be really focused on serving that local area. There's a lot of cool things you can do, like embedding your Google business kind of link and map in the footer of your website, things like that. Um, but it becomes a lot more about optimizing your Google business profile than just the website. You have this additional property that Google's made and they kind of own that you can build out. Awesome. I also have, I'm not trying to like, I'm not trying to, I just know we're like, we have two minutes left. I'm not trying to like sell anybody anything, but I have, there's a local, I, I think that uh, we mentioned it too. Like, uh, did you all mention the, the, like the links and stuff? I, yeah. I gave everybody here. Cause I don't, I'm not, I'm not trying to make money. Uh, I just really like supporting this work and specifically all of you, like this community. I love, that's why I put it in the slides and in the story and everything. Like, I love this stuff. If you want, there's a local SEO course uh, on the site, it's 90% off. I think that makes it like five bucks or 10 bucks or something that like literally walks through everything. If we had more time, I'm also happy to expand. So, I just know we probably all get a jump. Brent, Brendan put uh, all his uh, SEO courses on 90% discount for our audience. So that's in that link that Jane shared a few times. So definitely go check those out. Yeah, they're somewhere yeah, like of five, course. 10 bucks um, after that discount. So um, yeah, you guys, you are all the best. Sorry, I should. <laughs> um, I'm going to selfishly ask, I'm going to try to squeeze in one last question, which is a little bit unfair to ask at the end. But uh, do you have like three more minutes, Brendan? Uh, I have like, I have, yeah, let's do three. Okay. Um, how do you think about backlinks for like the beginner? Yeah. Um, the beginner, I think about like that link intent around like, 
stats and trend, like any article that like I can create that will build links on autopilot over time. I'm also a big believer in finding ways to create things, not like manufacturing virality, but uh, I'll give you an example. I worked with a window washing company, not like the most fun business in the world. I mean, fun to do, but like not really cool from an SEO standpoint. And we had this idea of like, how long would it take to wash all the windows on the Death Star? Um, so I started like trying to find out how many windows are in the Death Star. I couldn't find out. I found this old forum uh, about the USS Enterprise and Star Trek. I'm more of a Star Wars person. No judgment. Just kidding. Totally judging mm. people who watch Star Trek. Um, but we found like literally in this forum for like six months, all my, I say this affectionately, these nerds, like my fellow nerds were busting out schematics and counting all the numbers of windows on these things in the schematics of them. And like, then we had our answer. We're like, okay, cool. There's 3,712 windows on the USS Enterprise. Let's calculate how long it'll take to wash all those windows. Do you wash them inside and out? Do windows get dirty in space? I don't know. Maybe you just have to wash the inside. All of these things. And we ended up, we're like, all right, we're going to create this article. We're not only going to push it out to all of like the trade people that like are in the window washing, pressure washing, like trade, but also we're sending it to like Nerdist, all the like nerd websites we're sending this to because it's like kind of hilarious and ridiculous. And then like, and it was super fun to put together. Like that was fun content to make. Um, and like, we'll probably get a bunch of links thanks to this sort of thing. So I think that like do something fun that's like an inner a Venn diagram intersection of like pop culture or current events and you. Or like if you have a really interesting backstory, I'm a big believer in like going on podcasts or sharing your story other places around the internet and that picks up links as well. You know like I share my like being a teacher for 10 years and quitting that and going full time in my own job like I I share that story all the time my career change story um yeah and then people just link back to the website so hopefully that's helpful super helpful brendan cool. thank you so so much this was a treasure trove uh of information and wisdom so we really appreciate you uh awesome to kick off this small business with soul series so uh you as the honorary kickoff guest um We'll, there will be more of these to come. And for those of you, like, as we build out that series, shoot me an email of like things, topics you'd want us to cover, guest, types of guests you'd want us to see. Um, we're still building this out right now. And it's, it's a free event series. So um, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Jane, for dropping in all those links and keeping everything um, tight as tight as hell. And uh, <laughs> we'll see you all later, uh, later this week. Uh, have a great day. Thanks, everybody. See Thanks, you. Thanks, Brendan. Bye. Bye-bye.